right, look, it's no secret that great music can come from a dark place. And let's be honest, you can't get much darker than war. And for as long as soldiers have gone off to fight, music has played a big role in their lives. Soldiers use songs to pump them up before a battle or even write songs as a form of therapy. They were the finest soldiers. It was my privilege to lead. And they deserve the medals. The men who died, not me. But in past wars, it was mostly a private thing. But with the evolution of technology, not anymore. In places like Iraq and Afghanistan, soldiers are creating their own original music while they're still at war. And they're recording everything from patriotic anthems to anti-George Bush tirades. Now, these days, most of the troops have laptops with them. Some even have microphones and production software. So basically, they can turn their military base into a music studio. Documentaries like Soundtrack to War and Gunner Palace have exposed it. That's a and Hollywood understood it in a bunch of movies, including the ever underrated Three Kings. I just want to celebrate so along comes Sean Gilfillan, an officer in the U.S. Army. And when he was fighting in Iraq, he was amazed at just how many soldiers were making music to get through the experience. Sean lost seven close friends in Iraq, and so he knew the pain and anger caused by war. So when he came home to the U.S., he created something called To the Fallen. To the Fallen is a military-exclusive label. It's the only one of its kind, featuring politically charged hip-hop tracks, classic angry rock songs, and your good old-fashioned heartfelt country music. Please say hello to Sean Gilfillan. We, uh, we've got the t-shirt on, right, to the fallen. We'll talk, talk about the record label in a second, sure. but just to give people a perspective of who you are, when, uh, when the war in Iraq started, you were one of the first to go in and be part of the occupying force, right? Right. Yeah, we were stationed in Germany, and uh, as some people remember, uh, Third ID went up, the Marines went, went out right, and then after we, you know, went through the city of Baghdad, they brought First AD up and to occupy the city, so we were, like, technically the first occupying force in the city. And so when you're a, a, you know, a young man stationed in Germany, and all of a sudden you look around and go, I'm going, I'm going to Baghdad. Yes, a lot of party, last minute partying. Was it, it was really? A, of course, yeah, definitely. It was, uh, you know, you never know. I mean, it's just like if, if someone said, hey, you know, you have to go to war right now, you, you, you wouldn't know what to expect. And I think that's a very common theme. The soldiers don't know what to expect unless you've been there. And obviously the guys there now, I've been there quite a few times, so. Certainly. Starting a record label and putting out the songs of soldiers, what I, what I wondered would be how that process even begins for you. Did you look around and, and realize that a lot of the, the, like the therapy, the, the catharsis is happening instantly right. all around you? I think there's a, a, a bunch of different reasons. I think um, one of the big reasons that I saw when I came back and I got out of the military was the huge gap. And there's a huge gap between regular civilians and people that are serving overseas even between, you know, in any country that's in, you know. Um, and I wanted to kind of bridge that gap because people only see, you know, generals and politicians on the news. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times you don't hear from the soldiers, you know, what do they do every day? What do they, how do they brush their teeth? I mean, I mean, just stupid things that you would never know unless you actually had to be over there. So the first uh, reason was to bridge that gap, you know, take the soldiers, their actual words, what they wrote about, what they cared about, their, leaving their kids and their wives and fear and anxiety, all these emotions, and kind of bridging them directly to, with the civilian population. You suffered personal loss deeply. You, your, right. Seven of your, of, your, of your people died? Right. Um, yeah, well, actually, we got extended for, for three months. And then the day we were supposed to be back to Germany, um, five of our, my friends died um, in a car bomb, a vehicle bomb. They actually, you know, they were setting up a, a checkpoint. They all walked over to the car, and it, you know, blew up. And then... Uh, one of my other friends died. A, a bomb was under a bridge, and his Humvee rolled over it, and it, and it blew him up. And, uh, and we actually thought he was going to make it. And then, like, little do you know, like the, the next night he, he died. So uh, then my other friend got shot with a sniper. So that's just going to make you the man that you are, <laughs> experiencing right, yeah. all that stuff. And 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 it, the tragedy for the families who, who who lose people, sure. But all those other soldiers who stay around and they have to go out the next day to that same spot right. when they know that this is happening, the, the impact on their mind is going to be 
massive. Oh, it has to be. I mean, it's, that's the hardest thing is the next day you got to go out and talk to the same exact people and put on that happy face and win hearts and minds when you're just so upset inside. And that's really, really um, weighs really heavily on your, on your mind, especially when you, you have a job to do and that job is to maintain a certain level of professionalism. And um, it's really hard. It's hard to do. So I imagine the making of the music then on the bass is really a big part of the healing for people, isn't it? I definitely think so. I think even, even when we were there, um, going on patrols, everyone wore iPods and you know, listen to heavy metal or, or hip hop, whatever. Even in the rooms, in the barracks, you walk by and there, you know, there's fights of who wants to play country, who wants to play hip hop, and, <laughs> uh, fighting each other and wrestling. You know, it's all like male bravado stuff. Who won? So. Who won? Which, which genre of music won more than not? I don't know. It's, it's, it's a toss up. It <laughs> usually depends on the squad leader. Whatever music the squad leader likes, he tells them that you know, <laughs> we're playing country and I don't care what you say. So I think. I can't uh, get motivated for country. Yeah. Is that what it's like? <laughs> yeah. Well, then they just put on their headphones and, you know, go in well, a quiet you know, corner. I mean, to the fallen, I mean, what you got, I mean, you have, you have country records, you have rock records, you have hip hop records. What I find really interesting about this is that the range of subject matter is very wide. There right. are your very patriotic songs, yeah. we're glad to be here, and then there are those songs that are so not that. Right. They're the opposite. And I wonder for you, the kinds of submissions you're getting, have you noticed that there is that range? Well, I think what, what people don't understand, it, unless you've kind of been in the military, is the military is just a microcosm of the rest of society. So every, you know, little group in American society is represented within the military somewhere. Most of the time, they have to stay in the same room. So uh, I think that there's a lot of, you know, you have, you have patriotic people in, in the room with you, and then you have guys who question the war. And um, one of the things that people might, might not know as well is um, in those barracks rooms are probably the most political centers you can ever see. I mean, they debate everything. When you sit with a guy for a year, mm -hmm. I mean, obviously stuff's gonna come up and you're just gonna argue whether it's sports or religion or politics or all this stuff. So, you know, it's kind of like an extension of those debates kind of is reflected in their music. Do you get the sense that the, that, that, that the American population doesn't know what to do with Iraq veterans? Yeah. I think because of that huge disc, I mean, it's not World War II where everyone's, you know, mom and grandfather are serving in the war. Yeah. Um, this is a war where one million people serve and the other 299 million, if they don't have any connection to the military, they don't know what the hell's going on. I mean, they look on the internet, they might, you know, you know read up on what's going on, but unless they have interaction with someone who's actually been there, they really don't know what's going on. Oh, so like you're a record label guy, but you're also a part-time therapist? Sometimes, yeah because you must be getting a lot of submissions from guys who are just crying out. Um, we do. I mean, we, we, uh, a big thing about our label is that um, even if you're the worst musician of all time and you know, you're terrible, mm -hmm. you can, um, we'll give you advice on how to better your product. And, and you know, our A&Rs are instructed very, very, very um, strictly to answer every single email that comes in, no matter what, help the soldier out, help him develop if he wants to be a better artist. And, what does the brass think of this? They like it. I yeah. mean, I think that they, um, they see obviously the value in the soldiers getting their emotions out and their feelings out. And, um, you know, I, I mean, I, I think they definitely see um, that, especially in the bigger picture, uh, the American so humanizing the American soldier is definitely a benefit to our military. But do they embrace it? Because when I see those, and I know you've talked about this, when you see those ads for the military, and right. you, I don't hear any of these songs in that. They do embrace it. I mean, we, we've been to the Pentagon, brief, brief the different services on such, and they know what we're doing, and I think they definitely value. And, and we are trying to get with them to try to uh, develop some sort of musical therapy program and, and different sorts of aspects, because, you know, we believe that military service is honorable, and um, that we have something to benefit them as well. We gotta come back to the show, man. I'll no, I definitely back. will. I John appreciate Gilford. it. Thanks, Thanks for your time, man. I appreciate that. John Gilford, if you want to hear any of the music, you gotta go to his website, which is tothefallenrecords.com. Tothefallenrecords.com is also available on iTunes uh, and see the, all, all the different kinds of genres and the different kinds of attitudes uh, in these songs. All right, so when the hour returns, one of this country's finest actors, and he also has one hell of a story to tell.